Bro, I don't know if I told you this or not. Did you turn on the mic? <sighs> Damn. Trying to start. You don't have to yeah. wear these, by the way. If you don't want. No. No. Just uh, maybe put them on, just so we could like kind of hear that this shit's like working. All right, vamos. Welcome to episode nine of Hear Me and Beer Me. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Follow us on all socials. Today we've got a little bit of a different episode for you. You're gonna see down the road why we've you know mixed in a couple things that have not been done before and we'll also get into why right but it's fitting because three days from now you'll be seeing the eighth annual Perreo Palooza beer pong tournament so I figured it was a perfect time to bring on today's guest you gotta hear him you gotta beer him give it up for Packy Lopez how's it going thanks for having me on the podcast for yeah, thanks for coming on bro I really I mean, appreciate it yeah I didn't even say that in the intro but the reason he's on and it's so fitting is because he's last year's champion so give it up to the champ of the seventh annual you and your girl destiny um you looking to win this eighth one or what yes of course I'm so excited you especially you got his uh got the nice setup Gatsby and everything yeah yeah it's going a all, he's going all out this year yeah you think you got this in the bag or what are are you that champion that's like all confident, or you're like the humble one that's like I'm humble, just you know, okay, because I don't want to be all confident and I get and I lose, yeah. terribly, yeah. And now it's on camera, so like if you don't win in two years, I, if you would have said like I'm gonna win, I would have sent you this video, and I'm like <laughs> bro, you remember when you said you were gonna win and then you didn't? I'd have been salty. As well. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the perfect play that you had to fucking like just say that you're humble and you're looking forward to the experience. Great Gatsby. We're all going to be dressed up. He's going to look probably like better, but exactly the same. I'm going to look very much different from what you guys are used to seeing me look like. So um, I'm excited for that. But uh, like I said, thanks for coming on. And I'm, I'm really excited to like dig into like deeper to what you do. We kind of touched on it that we've known each other now for like a good while. We've known each other for how old are you in sixth grade? Like 12? 11, 12. I believe. Yeah, so that's, like, over 15 years, you know? And, like, we were, like, really close at a point. Not that we're not close, yeah. but we're just, like, inseparable at a point. And then it's, like, you know, stuff happens where, like, people go do their own thing. But, like, we were always friends, always cool, always tight. Yeah. No beef, no drama. And then I feel like slowly but surely, like, we're kind of, like, getting back to, like, you know, not inseparable, but, like, we touch on things more often yep. or, like, or we, yeah or we just run into each other more often yep. you know but um actually we just saw each other like two weeks ago i had a whole mask on though the whole time yeah <laughs> at, at, the, at the halloween party <laughs> bro this guy walked right past me with my mask on my halloween costume Rey Mysterio, <laughs> and i'm like damn bro like you're gonna come on the podcast can't even say what's up to like your boy and you're like oh shit dude that's you oh, you really couldn't tell right no, no, no one was able how'd you to. end it up at the towards the end you know, <laughs> bro, uh, dude. You know, I had a steel cage match with Eric. Shout out Eric, and you know, I was I was slumped, but it was a good time. It was a great time. What time did you end up leaving? Or what, dude? Honestly, I was coming from a different Halloween party, uh -huh. so I went there, say hi to everybody in like thirty minutes. I'm like, do I go home? <laughs> Damn. So I had to head out. But as soon as we got in there, and we were doing like buzz ball shots. We did a buzz ball competition. Yeah, bro. Shout out Eric again. So we and Eddie, me, him, and Eddie, because Eddie was a uh, Canelo. We did a competition, or was it was it Alexis that did it? Man, I don't even know. <laughs> but but we did like a competition yeah. to see who would win the belt by seeing who could take the longest buzz ball shot. So I did like ten point two seconds. Eric did like seven point something. Eddie did like three point eight. Like or Alexis, man, I don't know. It was on the YouTube. My bad, but. uh <laughs> That's that tells you how like lit we already were by that point, but it was a good time, you know. Nice setup for sure. Yeah, 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 hell yeah. Um, 
you're you're on here, man, though, to like dig a little deeper into who you are, what you do, you know, how you're like thriving in the community and whatever. Obviously, you're like a real estate. Do you enjoy what you do? Yeah, of course. Helping, I like what I do. You know, helping out a lot of families. Uh-huh. So helping families get into the place or try to relocate as well. One big thing that made me want to go to real estate is, you know, when the market crashed, it hit a lot of families. So I'm like, there has to be a way, even if it's good market or bad market, that you can still come up on top. Mm -hmm. So that's when I just started studying. Started looking into it? Looking into it, started studying, Mm -hmm. and never looked back. Yeah. You know what's crazy? Like, I feel like most most people that come up with an idea or a product or something or you know become like very successful is because they take that thought they're like there's a problem how can i fix it and a lot of people's minds don't operate that way where it's like you said you saw the crash you're like well how can i prevent that from happening again or how can i better it you know for sure there that's something there's something to be said to people who are like that like that's how things get created and reinvented and you know evolve problem solver exactly Try to be a problem so solver. so so that's what you would consider yourself to be like do you just does your mind kind of operate in a way like that yes yeah, just problem it? solving anything mm-hmm. i guess you can just put me in any scenario and i just try to find both sides like even if it's bad how to come up on top if it's good you know just keep doing good and and why real estate though like well actually I'm cheating because I knew you first were like a car salesman, right? Yes. Actually, you helped me cop my car. Yeah. Nice <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, SS. Yeah, a little Camaro back in the day. Yeah. Um, Still looks new. Yeah, for sure, dude. I tried, I tried, bro. But, dude, I actually, funny story, I it, I crashed it like the first week I got it. I think you know this. <laughs> so. story, but yeah, bro. Like, And they were able to fix it. It wasn't total. So that's good. But um, what what made you transition then from cars from selling cars to doing real estate to do real estate Uh i just you know three things that people need in life is food a house and transportation Uh so i hit one of them cars let me get to the next one i won't be doing the nothing in the food industry at all but providing helping people get shelter house that they can call a home Uh and in the car business too i'm still in the car business but i do mostly on the finance side Uh So I'm a finance manager at one of the number one dealerships of the auto group. So I'm very excited. I'm very blessed. Just, you know, keep working hard, discipline, consistency. Consistency plays a big part um, when people are like, oh, why isn't it working? Because a lot of sometimes people just do it for a little bit. They stop like, oh, I did good today. Just like the gym. People are like, oh, you know, I did good for a week. Mm-hmm. No results. So you really just got to be consistent and disciplined. Yeah. How long have you been doing this now, real estate? Since 2017. 2017. So you got, like, your license then, 2017? Yep, 2017. And, and then I'm, you went, like, full full into it? Or, like, you were still doing, like, dabbling with, the with like, the car stuff? Car I stuff went or? full into it for the first year. And then once I, you know, I don't want to say figure it out because we're always learning every day. Uh-huh. But got more in tune. Got it. Um, then I went back and then did... Uh, Got back in the car business and was doing both. And I still do both as well. I'm licensed in Florida too. So Illinois and Florida. So I like traveling in Florida. Try to get, you know, my roots out there. Because mm-hmm. I really love the weather. You know, as you can see, winter time's approaching. So don't want to be out here when it's winter time. Yeah. I saw you like, uh, you bought an Airbnb, you know, out there. Or, well, you bought property and you converted it into an Airbnb. Yes. I had uh, two Airbnbs. Uh-huh out there but it was just so difficult you know going back and forth and you know try to manage properties out there and properties out here yeah i'm actually going to florida in two weeks but i'm going where where were what part of florida did you have your spots it was uh west palm beach it was right across mar-a-lago the uh-huh. trump uh his golf where his house was at oh the, got it. that got raided so uh-huh. right across you can see it from there right on the ocean got it got it um yeah man but it's like 70s over there right now like high 70s yeah what are you gonna do out there Go to Disney. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've never I've never been out there. Well, I've been out there, but I've never gone to Disney, so. I've never been there till No, I actually went when I was, uh, like, like uh, small. finishing up high school and stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, uh-huh. but then I'm, like, didn't uh, get the whole experience. I went last year. Uh-huh. So I, I did Disney and then, you know, checking out Airbnbs yeah. last year. So I'm like, you know, might as well do both. 
Got it. So checking out the sceneries, checking out different cities, going from Orlando, Tampa, Miami, West Palm, just to see where I can set up. Mm-hmm. What made you want to get into the Airbnb game, though? Like, that that's like a like kind of a leap, I would think, from, like, just regular real estate. Yeah, so I'm mostly, like, uh, I'm a real estate broker. I help a lot of my family and friends, but I'm mostly an investor. Mm-hmm. So I try to find different ways how to invest to have more passive income so, you know, have money keep on coming when you're out doing other things. Mm-hmm. So when I decided to do Airbnb, I just wanted to try something different because I have rental properties right now mm-hmm. but airbnb is a little bit different it's more like day-to-day you know seeing trying to trying to market it more how how you take the pictures the descriptions um straight and you get a lot of different uh not tenants but clients you mm-hmm. know they're saying so like maybe in one week you can get like two families a month you have like six families so just want to try something a little bit different got it got it helping your friends and family does that bring you, like, a different joy from just, like, you know, a regular it, client? Work, it does. That's know? why I only help uh, friends or families or referrals. Got it. Yeah, I don't go out and, like, source and try to... F- I would love to help everybody, you know, but just uh, friends and family because when I help them out, it's just, like, it's a different feeling, like you're saying. Like, it's a joy. Like, oh, you know, mm-hmm. you just see the smile on their faces. Yeah. And then when they invite you over for, like, the housewarming party, you know, they're so excited yeah, and, and it's almost like, I know they did it, but it's like we did it almost. You yeah, know? just helping guiding them and everything, especially with my investor mindset. It definitely helps, you know, different perspectives um, than just like a regular like real estate broker help you show houses, sell houses and stuff. Mm-hmm. So mostly like an investor, but family and friends, I definitely help out. Got for it. sure. It's interesting to me that you like got into this lane sort of. You know, because there's, like you said, there's so many things and you thought of like the main things, right? Which is like, you know, shelter, transportation, you know, yeah, and food. food. Yeah. And then you ended up choosing the one that you did. It's like, was that always something you wanted to do? Or like way back in the day, was there like, did you want to do something different and then just found it along the way? How is it really that you stumbled Honestly, upon Honestly, that's, that's a great question, actually. You know, I, I always knew I was going to do something with business. Mm-hmm. Always something with business. I was always been a businessman since, uh, since a kid, honestly. Like always trying to find something to sell. Even my toys or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, mom used to take us Hustling. to the, Yeah, take us to the thrift store. I'm like, dang, you know, I got... You know, handy down toys. I'm like, I can just try to sell these, uh-huh. you know, so I can get some better toys. They're always trying to find a different way to, you know, step up and, you know, get to get a better life. Right. You know, especially, you know, most of us are, you know, first generations here. You know, our families come from uh, different countries. So mm-hmm. when, we're, when we come here, first generation, it just makes me mind like, you know, we can't we can't fail our family. So just want to just keep going and growing and give back to the family so they can enjoy different lives and different experiences as well. Mm-hmm. So I just knew something with business I always wanted to do. Uh, but touching back to real estate, what really, really got me into real estate is like, not a lot of people know, uh, close people, but like when my family lost their house back when the market crashed, I'm like, no way. But when the market crashed, you know, like I said, if it's bad, you can make it good. If it's good, you know, it's going to be good. So we're on the bad side. You know, everybody was market crash. Yeah. You lost the house. But a lot of people that were smart, you know, when the market crashed, they were buying more houses for cheap, you know, yeah. 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars. So that's why you got to look at things with well, perspective and basically like things are great always. You know, everything's great all the time. You just got to find the good in everything. Kind of. But that, when my, my family lost the house, I'm like, there has to be a way. Like, we could have avoided this. So then that's what made me want to study. And I found a lot of different ways to mm-hmm. how to avoid that same scenario and try to help people, too. Yeah. To sort of avoid stuff like that. Yeah, so uh, that's interesting that you say that, too. Because, like, my knowledge on real estate or, like, you know, the housing market or any of that is very surface level. Like, I I don't even know if the things that I think are true are true. You know, because you consume most of the stuff from, like, either people you know or stuff online or not an actual person that's telling you that's in the business, you know? So, 
keep that in mind, right? That my knowledge is very surface level. And you saying that when it was bad, it's like, how can you make it good? Well, what about right now that houses are like uber expensive where, you know, like tenfold, like you, you wouldn't see houses selling at the prices that they're selling now. Why is that, that why is it transitioned in that way? Because obviously, right? Like inflation or whatever. For sure. Right, but why? Why is it that it's scarcity? You know, not a lot of houses uh-huh. when COVID. Uh, sorry, cut you off. When COVID oh, happened, good, you bro. know, um, a lot of workers just stopped, you know, building new houses. So it's like they're playing catch up too. Got so it. So the scarcity of the homes that are available. Got it. So you think you need the world to catch up to that time that was lost for things to kind of go back to at least not how they were, but just kind of stop going this way. You know. Kind of it's always like going to be up plateau. and down, like a roller coaster mm-hmm. effect. So you always want to make sure that you have um, everything in line. Try to be um, ready for when the moment presents itself. Basically, correct. That's right? when success happens. You know, when you're prepared, and then when opportunity comes, you know it's an opportunity. Because a lot of people, you know, there's opportunities coming in our faces all the time, but we don't know it's opportunity because we're not prepared. But when you're prepared, and the opportunity, like you know, this is an opportunity. You know, you can see an opportunity like, hey, Patrick, this is an opportunity. I'm like, really? How? You know, because I don't know. And then you'll explain it to me. Uh-huh. But let's say if we both didn't know, then we both would have know it's an opportunity. Mm-hmm. But if we both were prepared and we see an opportunity, then that's when success happens. Bro, you've said like three or four things on this pod that when I rewatch it and edit it, I'm going to write them down. Like like motivational quotes, bro. They're so <laughs> fire. You said preparation is... When you're prepared. Yeah, like an opportunity. That's when, when you're success prepared. happens. Bro, that was crazy, dude. Like that, But it's so true, though, you know? Right. But that comes, again, from what we dissected earlier, where you have this, I would say, particular mindset, I guess. It's a little different. And I'm not trying to, like, gas you up or hype you up. It's just the fact of, I think, how you look at things as, like, a problem solver, maybe, you know? Nope. Whereas, like, I don't think a regular person looks at things i mean people look at things different ways you know and i think that's just the way that you tend to look at things yeah that was such a fire quote bro i just i <laughs> can't get you. over it might get it tatted <laughs> <laughs> imagine bro just at the tournament you see me with like <laughs> when you yeah bro, and, like i feel like that's gonna be playing in my mind the whole time while yeah. i'm shooting like you know what that opportunity is presenting itself i gotta prepare yeah that means i'm gonna so practice prepare all now week. Yeah. so when the opportunity comes that last shot bro boom i'm gonna practice all week just for when the opportunity present. bro that was crazy yeah. dude but uh but dude a lot of what you say like has a lot of you know weight to it honestly i think it holds a lot of weight and um like you said, really all that people can do in instances like now, and I think it's getting better. I don't know. I mean, I kind of, like I said, like you, like I said, it's, I'm very surface level. Yeah. You know, someone like you can probably go more into depth and be all like, day. oh, <laughs> this is what we're like projecting, you know, down the line Correct. and shit like that. I think it's getting better from an outsider's point of view. But like you said, if people aren't ready for when that ball drops, it's like, then you missed it, you know? Correct. You got to wait for it. So another good quote, you know, big thing is uh, you got to find mentors, you know, things that uh, everybody has a mentor. Mm. Even the greatest had mentors, Kobe, Michael Jordan, just like mentors. You can't go far if you don't have a mentor because you're going to just be like a like a boat with no sail. You'll be in the ocean and just going all over the place. Mm-hmm. You need like like a, a ton of vision, a direction and focus for sure. Um, so I look into a lot of like Warren Buffett and one thing that he said um really striked me um, because I dabble in the stock market too uh, here and there. Shout out my boy George. He puts me on, puts me on game. Um, So what his thing said was like, be fearful when people are greedy and be greedy when people are fearful. So touching back when the market crashed, you know, people are fearful. They're all losing their houses. Um, And that's when you get greedy. You know, you have all this money put to the side. People are scared, losing their houses. You got to take the opportunity. Yeah. You got to roll that dice, take that gamble, Correct. you know. But on the other note, before that happened, it's like people were being greedy. You know, people that shouldn't be buying houses were buying houses. And that's when you should be scared, fearful. So when people are greedy, be fearful. And then um, I lost my train of thought. 
So be uh, fearful when people are greedy and be greedy when people are fearful. Yeah. So just... No, don't worry, bro. I, yeah. I know, like, like I put this pressure on you now, like, to give fire quotes, like, the rest of this <laughs> podcast and shit, but we already got enough, bro, for, like, the yeah. month and shit, you know? <laughs> I want to circle back to you growing up and, like, yeah, we knew each sure. other and stuff, you know? I don't think we ever talked about, like, bro, this is, these are my goals in life. Like, you know, we were too young. Like, yeah, we, exactly. We, we would just kick it, but... Um, we would like play soccer together and like play stuff. Play and shit. Yeah, bro. Like all that just kicking. You would come over the house. Exactly. Like I'd go to your house after school because yeah, you lived we'll like go. right there. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It, it was a good time. And like I said, we never talked like anything goal oriented or, or nothing like that. So it's cool because years down the road, specifically, you know, that one pop up we were at, um, at the barbershop. Yeah. 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 At, uh, uh, Andrews. Yeah. Yeah. At 068. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Shout out Andrew. Um, we were there, and I feel like that was really the first time where we had kind of, like, talked. Like, you were telling me about stocks, and you were telling me about your real estate. You told me to download, like, some app for stocks, like, yeah. stuff like that. And it was kind of like a, like a, not surreal moment, but it was one of those moments where I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Like, we went from that to, like, so here. here we are, you know, like, talking. And now we're, like, on a pod, like, you know, breaking down, like, where you, how far you've come and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool, you know, and, like, like, I really do appreciate you coming on. How was it that, like, you know, what what did you think when we were growing up? Like, did you have those goals? Because you wouldn't tell me about them, obviously. Yeah. Or was it until that moment where you're like, damn, bro, like, I, like we we lost our house. Like, that, that was the one that, like, sparked it for you where you're like. Yeah, so what I, like, I always wanted to be a soccer player, a professional. Like, yeah, that, we all that was like That was, like, my goal. Like, I had no other, like, uh-huh. no backup plan. Yeah. Like, soccer player, and that's it. You know, but then, you know, I hit some. Had some things in the in life, you know. I'm like, dang. So I couldn't become a professional soccer player, but that was like my main thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I would consider myself pretty good um, playing striker. So, and we played on the same team, you know, freshman team, undefeated. Mm-hmm. So after undefeated, that, baby. undefeated, <laughs> I scored a winning goal. Yeah, two one against Warren. Yeah, it was one one. Yep, my boy uh, <laughs> Brian Rojas. He kicked it, I remember, bro, and it hit the top of the uh, top of the bar, and I was running from outside the box in the box, and I hit her, it scored, and it was and it was just like a surreal moment. I'm like, you know, just so happy, uh huh, to the because you know you feel good when you you're helping out others, you know, team. It's not just one player. Yeah. So now like, we we got all that far to the last game, and you know we we made it, we did it, we made it happen. So that's what I really wanted to do, bro. To this day, I'm like, what? How? How would my life be? Yeah, you bro. Know, I mean, that's the dream. Growing up, you know, yeah. it's always a dream. But then you gotta, it hits you, and you're like, mm-hmm. that's actually not gonna happen. Like, exactly. You know, what am I gonna really do? Mm-hmm. So for me, it was just like a whole bunch of hurdles in my life, hurdles and hurdles. So I had to like shift. So you always have to pivot. You know, in life, you can't just be like, you know, it's good. You know, tone up focus, but you know. You got to shift here and there to get to where you need it. It's not going to just be a straight, easy road uh-huh. to just keep on going. So one thing that just, like, clicked, you know, like you said, like, losing a house or, like, you know, growing up and not having, you know, the best things and stuff. So I'm like, and you see others. And, yeah, around in our community, but you see, like, and you read and you see how other people are living too I'm like why can't that be us you know you go to Lake Forest you go to Winneka you see these mega mansions right mm-hmm. Barrington I'm like I want one of those why can't I have it you know we're all healthy thank God so everybody has the opportunity you know we have both hands legs you know we can see we can talk healthy and no excuses but like sometimes you know people you know I say we're blessed but sometimes people you know they do struggle with certain things you know maybe they can't walk or they can't hear or talk or something so I always keep that in the back of my head you know when I'm having a bad day I'm always thinking like you got to be thankful so mm-hmm. just be thankful yeah so yeah that's a big thing for me those are things that you don't think about though like on a daily basis and you're right you do have to remind yourself every now and then like I'll be having a bad day and then you're headed home and you're like you know, I got nothing to worry about compared to, like, what some people really are going through, you know? And, like, 
bro, like, honestly, the thing that's gonna, like, hit me the hardest, like, I already know, is, like, losing either one of my parents. For sure. Like, you know, I'm still glad that, like, they're, they're, I'm so glad they're, they're still both here. And that's kind of what I think about. I'm like, man, like, they're good. Like, I'm good. Like, all the people I care about are good. Like, let me focus on just that. Because you're thinking about these minor things, right? Exactly. That, that shouldn't, should and those can become distractions, right? Monetary things, yeah. Exactly. If you let it be like, like, woe is me. Like, if you kind of become a victim to, like, whatever is going on, like, you're never going to prosper, right? Like, exactly. so, from it. Like, you're never going to see the end of that. Why me, why me? Like, yeah, bro. Like, you can't do that. And I feel like you, instead of taking the approach where you're like, why me? Why can't I have that? Why? Like, you didn't take it as, like, a victim role like you didn't take the victim role with that you took it as like motivation I can do it. Yeah, yeah i can do it too we mm-hmm. can all do it yeah, yeah. which is dope going. bro honestly exactly. that you looked at it that way and fucking like now you're owning airbnbs in florida and shit that, yeah properties here yeah. and there so just keeping going keeping going you know striving but that you know that's a big thing it's all about the mindset mm-hmm. you know like you said a lot of people want to play victim and they don't go too far because it's like oh you know why me or you know, why couldn't I have that or this and that? Like, uh-huh. you know, chill, you know? Like, relax. Yeah, exactly, bro. <laughs> you know? Yeah, literally. Dude, but when we were, like, growing up, though, like, I felt like like there was a wild side to you. Like, you were a little bit wild. Yeah. You, know? you were, <laughs> like, was. you were not on the straight arrow. You were no. kind of, like, you know? Yeah. How, how did you, like, change that and, like, get on the straight path, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I'll touch a little bit about that, but the people that do know me, and I do see this podcast, this uh, interview. Um, just seeing, you know, I lived a different life. You know, like you said, wasn't a straight arrow. Uh, so just going through the emotions and just seeing things differently. And like every day was just like a struggle. Like every day was a struggle. So it was just like we, we were just all trying to get it fast, you know, uh-huh. get it fast because you never knew. When was the when was going to be your last day? So that's how that's how I was living, you know. While you know, like they said, while young and free. Yeah. So just trying to get it every day because it was a struggle. But now, now that I'm more like, uh, you know, composed, you know, you know, chill. Now it's like I have to hurry up because, like you said, our parents one day they might not be here, and I want to give my parents, you know, everything that we didn't have. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to wait like, oh, I have 10 years. You know, I can do it down the road. I can do it in five, 10 years because my parents may not be here. So mm-hmm. that's why I'm always like rushing or always, like they say, hungry, or always trying to go out and get in, always trying to like do something every day, positive. Yeah. yeah. And get better every day. Exactly. You know, but just um, going back to you said, like growing up, um, just struggling every day, just like, like I can't, you know, I can't be uh, living this life like that anymore. You know, it's, I'm not going to go far. Mm-hmm. And you see the people around you too. So I do see a lot of my friends, and I'm very happy. Like that, that that we all grew up. I mean, we lost a lot of friends too. But just growing up and seeing them do what they're doing now, having their businesses, just makes me happy. Yeah, so that just, they managed to make it out of like whatever. Correct. Yeah, just like you know the struggle and everything. You know, people live differently. So I mean. I always try to keep a smile on my face, you know, happy, always, you know, but a lot of people don't know about everyone's life, you know, you might have some things that, that you, you know, was going through, I had things that I was going through, everybody has their own life that they go through, Mm -hmm. you know, Yeah. so it was like this one summer, and it's so funny, because my sister, Sabina, she made like a, she had to write a a page in school, so she wrote a page like um, about our struggle too, it was called uh, Eggs. It was called eggs because, um, like, one whole year, we were eating eggs for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, just struggling. Like, no hot water sometimes, no heat, and, you know, had to, like, boil water just to take a shower in the winter. So, I'm like, dude, I can't live like this no more. So, I'm, like, always trying to think, innovate, 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 try to get get out there and make something happen. So, Uh I always think, like, even when I don't want to wake up or I'm feeling lazy, I just think about those days. To keep me going. Yeah. How you never want to end up there again. Yeah. Like, so I want to, you know, that's why I like taking my family out or, uh-huh. you know, you guys see me posting things because it's doable. Yeah. You know, so the people that know me from when we were younger and they see me now, you know, I'm thankful, you know, because they come up to me. They, you know, congratulate me too because 
I want that for everybody. Mm-hmm. Do you ever eat eggs at all now? Uh, I try not to, bro. I try not <laughs> You're to. You're traumatized? I'm traumatized, bro. Man. Unless it's like a skillet, you know, yeah, something decent, but just like. I know my sister, if she's watching this, she doesn't eat that eggs no more. At she's all? traumatized. Bro, she even wrote a whole story about it. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> I mean, dude, I would be pissed, bro. I would yeah. never <laughs> want to fucking eat that again. And sometimes it's cool, you know, like, um, you know, we were friends, and we are still friends, and I was going through that stuff even, you know, when we were younger and stuff. But it's just about the mindset. It goes back to the mindset, you know. I don't want to be, you know talking to you about this when we're trying to go play soccer trying to go have a good time and stuff right, right. and we're talking about this stuff because yeah. I already knew I'm like this is temporary even at a young age I'm like this is temporary you know one day we're going to be eating steaks lobster you know that's crazy all that bro. stuff you so, thought that. We were like, so I was, yeah so I'm like this is temporary you know so I'm going to yeah. just you know fight through it and go through it um, uh, another story I want to touch real quick I remember uh, my mom you know she Every Friday, she would like, uh, she like, oh, pick a place to go out to eat and stuff. And we would think like, oh, Olive Garden's fancy, you know, uh, Red Lobster's fancy or Rainforest Cafe, you know, this fancy and stuff. You know? uh-huh. So sometimes she would like um, save some money to take uh, me, my brother and sister out to eat. And we'll just like share a plate or two just so we can say like, oh, we went, you know. And then I'm like, that always hit me, you know, because now it's like, I remember when I took my family out. The very first time to a nice restaurant, Roof Chris, you know, um, 24 ounce T-bone steak and all this other stuff. So when I was younger, I'm like, this is temporary, you know, so it's just like any anything you're you're at right now where you would want to be at is temporary, you know, mm-hmm. as long as you're doing something every day to keep it moving. Yeah. If you're just sitting there not doing anything and thinking somebody's just going to come and be like, here. Yeah. It's never, no, nope, never going to happen like that. Exactly. Never. Never. I feel like you should uh you should go take your family back one day to like Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> All you guys just share yeah. a plate. Yeah. Just to like remember where you came from. Yeah. You know? We like, talk about it now now we laugh about it. Like, oh I remember this one time, you know, we got a, a lobster tear and we shared it with like four people and stuff. Yeah. Now it's like, Oh, now we're we're blessed, you know. We all get our our own we get Yeah, second. we can go here, we can go here or Yeah. You know. We look out for one another. It's and that was the biggest thing. You know, I wouldn't have changed it because we look out for one another. Uh-huh. You know, my brother helps me. My sister helps me. I help them. Even even no matter where I'm at, you know, I'm always going to need help. It's never like, oh, I'm this guy. You know, I got it and shit. Mm-hmm. You always need help. To a degree, I feel like going through that struggle too almost like brings you guys closer, right? Exactly. Also because you go through through tough times together. So... I feel like now you probably, like, appreciate your family a lot. And like you said, you, t- you took them out with you. Mm-hmm. It's almost like you want everyone to experience, you know, things, those milestones with you. Well, at least the people that were there when you were For sure, struggling, yes. you know. Yeah. That's probably a good feeling, too. And th- th- I think that it even connects to you saying, like, you want to help friends and family and stuff like that. Because you you were there. At a, like, not that, like, those people you're helping are, like low or like whatever but you needed help they're like exactly they're just we're always looking for uh-huh. you know yeah. better try and get to the next level yeah and you said that you recommend always like having mentors and stuff who would you consider to be some of those mentors that you've had along the way um some of my mentors you don't gotta say me <laughs> <laughs> some of my mentors was um one He's like my big brother. Lives out in Texas, you know. Mm-hmm. But he got me into real estate because I remember I had uh, saved some money. His name is Ray. He's older, so you guys don't know him. Uh, <laughs> he's older. Uh, I don't know Ray. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, know Ray. Ray. It's my guy. Yeah, he's low key. He's low key. <laughs> uh, but he made me get my real estate license, you know. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get my real estate license, you know. Just doing it because he told me like get it, and then we'll talk. We'll keep talking. Uh huh. And then he'd give you, like, more pointers. Yeah, he was like, oh, this is what you should do, you know. So the first thing I did was uh, just buy a building, you know, live in one, rent out the other, fix it, refinance it. So that was one mentor for real estate. Now he, like, built his mansion out in Texas and everything. This is my guy. He's my big brother. So that one's for real estate. Another guy I had in real estate that hooked me up was Dan. Helped me out. Shout out to my boy, Dan. We still talk. Uh, every people I talk to, my mentor, I still talk to him. Mm-hmm. But uh, those two definitely was a mentor. Uh, stock market, George is one of my mentors too. You know, it helps me out in the stock market too. 
um, just you know people like that are doing good where you want to be at yeah so like in your realm of like your work right like hypothetically if someone like needed help from you like what kind of help would they need from you to go to you as like a client or like you know for you to to, to service them like what what, what is how to that? get in contact with me not even that but like what do you offer I guess like what kind of services and stuff like that people could be looking for so what I offer it's a little bit of everything mm -hmm. to be honest I help people uh, get into a home help people if they want to invest in real estate I'll show them like different types of plans and then of course I tell them like always you know study and keep on I'll show them like what to study for what to look into as well because you can show them they can do it but you don't want them to get to that point where they're at and then they stop learning mm -hmm. and then it doesn't work yeah because it's you gotta stay consistent with stuff like exactly that. so you gotta stay consistent I help people finance as well so get into a vehicle transportation or if they want to get out their vehicle um, stock market I want to get into more like help people like um, like become a bank that's like one of my biggest goals like become a, a bank like a, a small hedge fund or something like that mm -hmm. so people can invest and you know they're getting dividends revenue every year every quarter so I don't talk a lot about that part a lot because I'm still working into it it's you know it's tougher so I don't offer that services yet helping okay. people develop more money through the stock market Yeah, but that's something you're like looking into, like down correct. The road. Yeah, but real estate, I can you know help I help a lot of people with real estate, any aspect of real estate, even commercial as well, and then uh, anything with the uh, with vehicles too, how the finances work. Got it. And where where is the place that you finance for? It's called Ziegler. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to charge them for this because I'm uh, shouting yeah, them out, right? Yeah, they should sponsor this podcast, right? They yeah. should have. Um, we actually work at the number one uh, I actually work at the number one dealership for uh, Ziegler because he has like 40 from Wisconsin, Illinois um, and there was a couple months I was number one out of all 40 stores so they actually sent me to Aruba trip uh, I'm sure a lot of people seem to they sent me to Aruba paid for my flight hotel gave me money to spend that's fire so I was thankful I'm like oh my you know thank, uh -huh. you know thank God you know people just don't give you things So when that happened, I was super excited. Where is Aruba? It's uh, on top of South America. It's like an island. Okay. So like uh, un like under Cuba and like Puerto uh, Rico? And no, it's on top of Venezuela. Venezuela, South America. Got it. So on just the right left, on top. On the left side. No, it's just like, like kind of right on top of it. Okay. Yeah. I don't got a map on me right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> Put a map in, the, yeah. <laughs> in this. Is like, here's Aruba. Is next to Colombia? <laughs> Yeah, like around there. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Then, then I know. I know what you're talking about. Then there's an island right on top of that. Yeah, super good food, man. I was like, I'm from Peru, so uh -huh. when they cook Peruvian food, I was like, wow, man, it's one of the best Peruvian foods I've ever tasted. Really? Wow. Yeah. In Aruba. And an island on top of that. So. Dude, I want to go to Peru so bad, bro. There's so many like things I feel like are out there, like besides Machu Picchu. Yeah. Like Lima looks really nice. There was these like mountains that look like very colorful yeah almost i'm not really sure what it's called but have you been out there to peru yeah machu picchu a couple times peru I, i love it you know it's just so so mm -hmm. much things to do out there what is uh like the place your is it your mom or your dad is from my dad peru? what what what's the place he's from lima lima yes sir Five. lima is where the capital like, yeah but it's like there's like a It's like the coast, right? But it's like elevated, and then like under, it's like the you could oversee the ocean, kind of, right? Correct. Yeah. So it's Lima, and then that's like uh, one of the suburbs, Miraflores. So it's, I know exactly what you're talking. About. It's so cool because you got that view. It's like on top. Yeah, bro. Like I would want to go there and like vacation and like stay there. You know, that would be sick. Yeah. So that's that's really I really loved it when I went out there. What is uh What is like the best Peru Peruvian dish? ceviche really is ceviche. it different from like Mexican ceviche it is yeah what, what like how so because I don't like ceviche I don't like the texture of it is it the same texture um a little bit yeah but if they cut them up in chunks and stuff and they have their own recipe no uh -huh. definitely check it out definitely check out Peruvian Peruvian restaurant. ceviche but you have to go to the you know certain restaurants and certain uh huh Because sometimes people say it's a Peruvian restaurant, but they just make our names look bad. Because uh, it's just so tough to, you know, make Peruvian food sometimes. Is there one, like, in the city that you would recommend? 
I like going to Dantas sometimes. Dantas. 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 Yep. T A N T A. They even have a rooftop there too. Okay. So that's pretty good. You know, try it out. Mm-hmm. And it's right in the city. Yep, right there downtown. You know what? I don't think we have Peruvian food out here, right? Like. No, we don't. No bro. spot that offers it. Mm-mm. That's crazy. I'm open up. And it's okay over there in the city. Because once you taste it from, you know, just like in when Mexico, you go to, you go to Mexico, yeah. it's like, yeah. oh, you know, it's fire. Compared yeah. to, you know, eat Mexican Bro, food everything. Out here. Everything. I mean, like, beer tastes better out there. Well, like, I'm saying Mexico now. Like, yeah. just everything, bro. The the air, like, has this sm- weird smell to it. But it just feels so good. Like, What fucking... part of Mexico are you from? Um, It's called Tonatico. Tonatico, okay. Yeah, so it's, like, south of Mexico City. I just always knew you, like, Cruz Azul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah those are the boys. Yeah. <laughs> Even though they, they suck right now again, but... That's a, that's a different conversation. <laughs> Shout out to Honduras, too. I'm half and half, bro. I'm sorry, bro. I don't know. They might beat them like, Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. <laughs> might come back Tuesday. But, uh, yeah, bro. I mean, like, uh, honestly, like, your story, like, really, really, like, it, I don't want I don't want to say impresses me, but I guess, like, yeah, like, I'm, like I say I'm proud of you because I know you from back then. Like I, like, like I said, I feel like you went through a rough patch. But you made it out and unscathed, and I feel like now you're like on a completely different path. So keep killing it out here, man, and I wish you the worst of luck next weekend <laughs> during the beer pond tournament where Hope. I'm going to become champion, finally. So so if I went two years in a row, then what? That would you're going to like, bro. I I can't play in the yeah, tournament Yeah, I feel like no I wouldn't invite you anymore. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'd be like, hey, bro, do you... Are they sending you to Aruba next year? You'd be like, "Yeah, dude, the weekend of like August 20th. That's what you're gonna I'd have it. it that weekend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nah, bro. But yeah, that'd be crazy if you won it two two in a row. I don't think anyone has won it back to back. Angel Collin has won twice, but not back to back. And you'd be the first one to win back to back. He's a tough, uh, tough, uh, tough competition. Too. Yeah, he that's is. who I played in the finals. Yeah, he just, I don't know. He just throws that shit. It goes in. Yeah, bro. He just throws it. I don't know what. I'm like, like bro. <laughs> The thing, too, like, you have to get him early because I feel like the drunker he gets, the better he gets. Correct. So, the one the one where you made the finals, your first one that you went to, yes. he didn't even make playoffs because it was early. We weren't drinking yet. Yeah. He was sober, so he didn't even make playoffs. He set me up after he brought that bottle, the shots. I was yeah, seeing you were trip when seeing it was triple. one cup. Um, Whoa. It's crazy. I feel like you got to find that balance because if you're too sober and you're too stiff, you won't get far either. Correct. But if you get too past, like, lit, you also you won't. Yeah, yeah, so you got to find that perfect balance and just, you know, get right in there. But, man, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. And um, we're about to play some beer pong right now, so you guys will watch. We'll have a little round. Me versus Patrick. Hopefully, I whoop his ass. Um, and hopefully, I whoop his ass next week. Ah. Next next weekend, and you guys will see more of that coming up. Uh, it's gonna be exciting, man. So, Super excited! I can't wait, bro. You yeah, know, bro. We definitely went out all out this year. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully they see that through the camera. Like it looks as good as we think it's gonna look, you know. But just us showing up alone, like dressed up and like all that, I think just that on its own is gonna already like make a statement. I think exactly. So, yeah, everybody's gonna be you know suited. Yeah. yeah. Next time you guys see no. Uh, no, I'm gonna make another pot, and then you guys will see me with like a little ball tie on. You guys are ready for that. <laughs> Nobody's ready for that. <laughs> I'll be here on the next one too, cause I'm. You know what? I'm. Gonna, we're gonna wait till Saturday. Yeah. Okay. You said the winner's gonna be here. Yeah, again. yeah, yeah. Okay. We're gonna have the winners on. Not this next one, but probably the pod after that. We'll have the winners on. So you might see Patrick two week two episodes from now, back on here. You know. Pop some champagne or something. Definitely bring the champagne, Bobby. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll do some of that. But, you know, if you don't, then my bad. Then you bro. know yeah. <laughs> that I took it out. Yeah, I almost don't know what to do if I win, then who am I going to have on? Just jazz? Like me and yeah. jazz. <laughs> champagne, so get ready to see jazz. Champagne again, roses. Right? Yeah, right. champagne roses. Shout out to them. Yeah, but yeah, bro, thank you for coming on, man. Anytime. I had a blast. And uh, I'm glad people got to know you a little bit more in depth. And, you know, hopefully... You just keep keep thriving, keep keep going up from here. Most definitely. Thanks for having me too as well first. So super excited, man. Even though we don't hang out all the time, but you know, we're always boys. So For sure, man. Appreciate yes, that, sir. bro. All right, man. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button. Subscribe, you guys. Follow him on all socials and we're rolling out. See y'all next week.
Fuck it rules. I mean, <laughs> normal rules normal that. rules, you know, normal rules. Just uh, no elbows, you know. Do you yeah. need more space over there? Um, I'm okay. You sure? Okay. Because I have a lot of space. The last time I played here. was last year. So no way? After you year. won that title? Yeah, I had to take a little break. Yeah? How was that, man? You guys beat Colin, no, in the final? Yeah, I think the year before we were in the uh, finals as well. Uh-huh. Before last year. Got it. Ready? Yeah. Oh, okay. I see you still got it. I was gonna like yeah. do the thing, but then you look like a bitch when like you do it and it rolls in another one. So you want the cup in or out? Oh, okay. That's not good. Right. Yeah, you you wanna you wanna uh, take the cups out so that it like so it's not like you hit it and it's yeah. right away three cups. You know, yeah, I know so during the tournament it's different and shit, but you know. Oh, okay. You know what? I don't have as much room as I thought that I had back here, but um. Yeah, man, I'm excited for this year's, dude. You're excited for the... We are just talking about it. You're excited for the theme of this year? Yeah, so excited. Well, for you, it's like... It's like another day at work, you know? You just go dressed up and, like, you know, whatever. But me, bro, like, I don't wear suits like that, like, every day or every week. Mm -hmm. So I went yesterday, actually, and just got my shit. I got a bow tie, bro, ready to go. <laughs> what you got planned to wear or what? Man, I'm thinking about, like, this uh, pinstripe... Flight blue suit, uh -huh. no tie. Damn, pinstripe? Okay. Yeah. No tie? No tie, no tie. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. Dude, fucking, um, hurt. bro. I take my coat off. Yeah, for sure. Dude, I was thinking about that, like, when we played. Like, I wonder if, like, by Storvar, you know, to, like, shoot and all that. Like, with, with the, with the, with with the coat on. Yeah, so. Off. Uh, yeah, I might just have to end up having to do the same fucking thing, but you know what? Um, man, it, it, it's crazy because it's like, it's so different from the usual ones we have. You know, the usual ones are always like outside and it's like everyone's just like in shorts or like a t-shirt, you know? Yeah, I, I think, think last year was uh, 2000s. Yeah, it was 2000s, bro. Yeah. What were what were, what you have on? A Bulls jersey? The Jordan jersey. Yeah, yeah right? Dante Jordan jersey. Five. I was, I was ready. Fire. I had a I had a, a jumpsuit on with like a headband on. Yeah, bro. yeah, I remember. You remember that, yeah. bro? I dude, like, but that's what I'm saying. Like, it's always like comfy vibes and shit like that, you know. But like, this year is like I I keep telling everyone it's like an adult prom. Yeah. <laughs> like we're we're all just like we might as well get like a limo and roll up to the to the. That'd be cool. Thing. Oh no, bro, that was crazy, dude. Yeah, we might as well get like a limo and roll up and like. That, show, yeah. that that would be hilarious, actually. But, um, yeah, that's why it's so different from the usual, you know, how we usually do it. Where it's like, um, wearing shorts or, oh, man, that's actually two, bro. Fuck. Yeah, we're, we're more, like, in shorts, like, comfy vibes. Like, it's it's so out of there. And I, I kind of like it because I feel like people have to prepare. Like, actually, Correct. they're like... Man, I gotta put on like a, you know, flannel and shit, like a, a button up or something, you know? And I'm fucking, man, what the fuck is going on here? I like how you said that video. Like, this is a theme of the party. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> the, the Beso Pluma one? Yeah. Yeah, bro. The Ella Baila Sola. Oh, shit, your coat, bro. The Ella Baila Sola, yeah. Beso Pluma. That's like the vibes we're going for. Like, legit the vibes. Uh, how many have you played in? Is this your, like, fourth played, one, uh, third one? No, my second one. My, also, very, my very first one, I went to the finals. I actually was going against uh, Eric and Jackie. Oh, that was the one at that church, right? That yes, we had? sir. I yeah. was faded. Uh -huh. I think uh, someone was dressed up as a pastor. And that was came Angel up, Colin. Angel, yeah. yeah, he came up to me like, here, bro. Opened up the Bible. <laughs> and they had shots in there, yeah, right? Yeah, bro, and I was to do my last shot, and I was seeing triple, bro. Bro, <laughs> I was dude, out that, that, one, that one was a good one. That one was fun. Eric and Jackie did win that one. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. so you the two you've been in you've gone to the finals you yes. won one you lost one then we're gonna see how this one goes dude arguably bro hosting is like like I, i'm using it as an excuse now mm -hmm. but it is a little hard like hosting and like you know because everyone like comes up to you and they're like hey like this happened or that happened or we need this we need that and like every year little by little like i've learned how to give myself less, less responsibility as we go where it's like Okay, I print out all the rules and put it at each table, so yeah. it's like they're right there. 
and then it's like the scoreboard like it's for everyone to see so everyone knows you know it's like just stuff like that that i've had to find and like navigate for like like no like i get it like i do need to say some things or like you know guys something like who's playing next and shit correct but for the most part i've been trying to figure out like ways out of like so i could focus bro because once it comes time i'm like my adrenaline is pumping but like for beer pong i feel like you need to be more like relax right? calm, like yeah. calm like zoned in so my adrenaline's like here and there because i'm doing this and doing that to host and yeah right and then i'm like okay like let me chill out like i'm about to play and then it just it doesn't work out because i'm like have you won one no that's what yeah. i'm saying no bro this is we'll my see. my eighth one bro but it's it, it's hard man because I, I don't know bro i feel like i like right now i'm not doing a great job but yeah. usually i'm like okay and uh it just as you go, bro. Like it, I don't know. Like now, I feel it more. Like I got a chip on my shoulder. Like, like I gotta get. To. Yeah, I gotta get the monkey off my back. But yeah, yeah bro. Uh, Reese, uh, Reese. Oh yeah, won. for sure. But we'll, we'll see how. I like, like, goes. I like who you dedicated to the trophy. Oh yeah, to Tony, Tony and Maddie. Yeah. yeah, not this trophy. I actually, have another garage. One. I forgot to bring yeah. it out. But that's why. So this one I am giving out. Cause, okay. Yeah, I just bought it off Amazon, bro. Like quick, you know. But we have another one that's like made out of actual bottles. like yeah beer bottles and because of that I don't want to give it out I right. want you know it's like it's like the Stanley Cup you know like yeah. that they win hockey it's like the same one it just like keeps going I want to do that but I'm scared that people are gonna like either break, break it, it yeah. or yeah and it, it could not be their fault it could just break you know it's correct old. yeah and um so that's why I don't give it out and it's dedicated to Tony and Mighty I think we call it the Chacaloso Cup. Cause yep. I used to call it Tony Chacal, so shout out, shout out Chacal, but uh, oh, yeah, bro. I wanna, I wanna win the Chacoloso Cup. So I, wanna do. I feel like I didn't give enough context at the beginning of like what the tournament is, you know. So basically, this is the eighth year we've been having a beer pong tournament. It started off as like just like one year I wanted to have it, and it was like not like it was like eight teams, like it was no one really there. And it wasn't organized, there was no rules, it was just like one table, you know? <laughs> and it was such a blast that the next year I was like, man, I want to do that again. And I did it, and I'm like, the second annual, and then it just third, fourth, and then progressively, like, now it became this thing where, like, I chase people down, like, hey, are you going to play this year? And, like, shout out to everyone that's still playing, man. Especially, like, you guys, too, you know? You guys are new to the tournament, but, like, now I feel like you guys are a staple in the tournament. Dude, uh, there's gonna be, like, a whole, like, videographer there, like, I don't know if I told you that part. Like, oh. to document it, yeah, okay. so that everyone can can watch, you know? So, that's kind of why... See the highlights? I, yeah, bro, everything, like, there, there's, like, there's some cool stuff, bro, that's gonna... I, I hope, like, the vision that I have for how it's gonna play out, you know? Hopefully, it comes out the way that I want to. I don't think you had played. The one before that was just, like, a... It was like a jersey theme, but it almost became like a like a fe what the fuck? It almost became like a like a festival theme, you know? Okay. So that one we had here, like in the backyard, and we I mean we ordered Mike's pizza, and the guy comes, bro, with like I think, bro, we must have ordered like 20, 30 pizzas, no lie. So he came with like the first batch, yeah, and like. We were already kind of lit, so dude, we gave him like shots, bro. He he was taking shots, and he, he went back, got more the more the rest of the pizzas, yeah. and then more shot, bro. He must have when he came out here lit, <laughs> and everyone was just giving him like money, like as a tip. Yeah. He must have left it with like at least a hundred dollars, bro, because yeah. everyone was just giving him money, dude. Yeah, yeah he was happy as fuck, bro. Like I would have been too, man. He left drunk and fucking with with money, dude. Like I see the five Damn, man. All right. Alright, it's because I'm, I'm talking too much, bro. It's okay, bro. It's because the, the cameras are on, bro. You know what? <laughs> this is the first time, like, oh my god. This is the first time I play with cameras on. You too? You too? Like, yeah. Especially because, dude, I can see us right there, so I'm kind of like... Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, look oh, good, man. You know? Yeah, bro. Like, I'm trying to, like, be in the... In, in the, the zone. <laughs> no, like, be in the frame, because it's a yeah. little bit, like, too zoomed in, but... Fuck it. You want a straight? No, no, that's fine, bro. Okay. Alright, bro, see? It ain't over till it ain't over till it's over. I need a little bit more room, dude. Okay. I keep hitting that same cup and it just like bounces out, bro. And then my second shot like <laughs> goes way left because I'm cause, cause I, I tell myself to hit a different cup. But yeah man, that's why it's so fun though, I think the tournament, just cause like 
you know, really, I feel like it's anyone's game, man, really. Like, it's just whoever's hot that day. I just feel like, I don't know, man. And then just being co-ed, like, adds another element to it, you know? We hit him on here. I think you guys even got the last shot on video too. Um, For last year. Yeah, we might have. I think I might have. Yeah. I might, I might have it. Your, uh, I might have it in my memories or something, like Snapchat. But um, yeah, that one, that one was a good time too. Damn, this might be over, bro. You think, <laughs> you think I could? You think you can do it? You think I could hit all seven? <laughs> you can, honestly. Bro. <laughs> we'll see, bro. We might have to run it back. No, we might have to run it one more time, bro. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> alright. Alright, alright. Here we go. Here we go. Seven in a row right here. Alright, man. I'm not. Damn, bro. I just I don't have enough. But no we excuses. Move it more this way. Yeah, well, are you good? Yeah, you're good, bro. Alright. No excuses, bro. Alright. Alright, I think that's a little better. Still gonna be one, bro. Still gonna be. I need a beer, bro. Yeah, I, I might. I might, bro. You want? I, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get one. I don't know if you want one for round two. Go ahead, bro. This one's behind the back. However you want. You what do, do you left want? or behind? Fuck it, behind. I'm a lefty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, right or behind? Oh, you are a lefty. Oh, shit, yeah. I just noticed that. Imagine I would have just been taking two cups off the whole time for you. That was gonna go in. You saw that? That that was going back in here. Alright, here we go. We got more room now. There's seven. I just I just need to hit one to rewrap. You gotta show them, bro. Oh my god, bro. I feel like this setup is the worst. Bro. Yeah, I feel like when now I'm more like nervous. This? Yeah, like there's all that room right there. But you know what? Fuck it. Right? I'm already like thinking about the second round. Like when oh, the second round. Then, bro. Man. You're hyping me up. I feel like it's over, bro. And also, I bought that cup just so like people could drink out when they win. Yeah. Like, fill it up, and you can drink it. You know, that that'll be sick. Ooh. All right. I will give you one, bro. One. No, no, no. You're good, bro. You're good. We playing. We playing by uh, the regular rules here. Oh, you got that's game. The wrong. <laughs> that's game, bro. No. I feel like people are starting to see. They're probably like this why he hasn't won. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably like, it's not because he's hosting, it's just because he sucks. They're probably saying like, dang, he won last year to be. And mm. then I'm rusty as fuck. Bro, you can't hit that first one. No lie, I might not have played since the last time we played also. Bro, and you know what I hit the most too? Well, not really, it's kind of funny. Because I host these tournaments, I think people think that I'm like really good. Like for real, so we'll be like out just like a random like little party or whatever. And people are like, oh yeah, bro, like, you're good, right? And I'm like, man, watch the video. Like, <laughs> like not, not really, man. I just, also, host, yeah, I just like, sure. right, I just like, you know, part, having people party or whatever. But, man, what the fuck, bro? Okay, dude, I've like hit that up. cup like four times, dude. All right, you good, man? Can you thumb it? Yeah. All right. Damn, game. All right, here we go. Seven in a row. Seven in a row, bro, right here. Seven in a row. Redemption? Imagine. Imagine I just hit one now. Oh. oh, wow. That's all I needed, bro. Fuck, dude. Nah, I'm not hitting six in a row. All right. We should run round two, though. Come, Come on. on. All right, I'm going I'm to get it. Do you want a beer or no? I'll take one. Yeah? Just, uh, Modelo or Ultra? I'll take Modelo, bro. Okay. Bro, I don't know if I told you this or not. Did you turn on the mic? Oh, damn. It'll still be good though. It'll still like capture the. Nah, I don't think so. Do like the bottom right here. Yeah. Just turn it on. Just hold, hold. I think you have to hold it for a long time. There you go. My bad, bro. You'll <laughs> still be good though. You know. Bro, guys. That's, That's good. That that way I'll uh, I'll take out the first game. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs>
Bro, you're leaving the door wide open and I couldn't like, ah, fuck. I wanted to flick it. There was no doing it. You left the door wide open, bro, and I couldn't like fucking Come on, bro. get in there, dude. Get that redemption. Fuck. Ah, bro, right in the middle. Ah, bro. Fuck. Oh, man. Good shit, bro. Good shit and good luck next week, dude. Thank you.